This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Whether you need a domain, website, or online store, make it with Squarespace. Hey, it's Chris. I've really been looking forward to making this particular video because every time I run into a really awesome Apple Watch app, which is not all the time, by the way, they're tricky to find, then I make a note of it. And when I save up enough, then I turn it into an episode. And this one is gonna be really great. I really think it has the potential to change how you use and think about your Apple Watch. The Apple Watch is one of the most important devices in my life, Apple or otherwise. I wake up with its alarm, the reminders keep me on task, the Siri watch face always knows what I have coming up, I use it to control audio on my TV, HomePod and AirPods, it's always pushing me to burn more calories. It's my favorite way to text. I use it to get directions, and I mean, the list goes on. Yeah, the Apple Watch is great out of the box. Literally, it's amazing. But adding the right apps to the powerful computer on your wrist can, in turn, make you just a little bit more powerful as well. Now, when you think about Apple Watch apps, you probably think about health apps first, which is fine. I don't blame you. This is a very health and fitness focused device. But I get really excited about Apple Watch apps that are more about productivity and actual content. So those are the kind of apps that I've rounded up in this video, with one exception. Before we really get into it, there's a few things I wanna talk about. I wanna talk about the state of Apple Watch apps in general, because it's interesting. Also, I wanna catch everybody up on all the great Apple Watch apps that I've mentioned on the channel so far. So I'm gonna hit those really quickly. And just to let you know, I'm gonna put the timestamps to everything I'm talking about down in the description. So if you wanna skip right into the apps that you came for, please feel free to do so. And at the end of the video, I'm gonna answer some of the questions that you guys just submitted while I've been sitting here recording this video. Are you guys wondering about the shirt, Mustard Blast Stand? If you ever come to Colorado, especially if you're vegetarian, you have to go here. Good Apple Watch apps are kinda hard to find, even for me. If you look in the official Apple Watch app store in the Apple Watch app on your iPhone, you might think, wow, there's really not that many Apple Watch apps out there. But some of the best apps aren't the ones that are featured in the official store. Okay, well, if they aren't there, then where are they? Well, every now and then you may run into a good one featured in one of the Apple blogs, or you can find some on an Apple Watch subreddit, or you might be able to find some more on a community site like Product Hunt, but they're kind of scattered all over the place. Unfortunately, several official apps have been disappearing off the platform recently, like there's no more official Twitter or Instagram apps, for instance. Although there are some good alternatives, I'm gonna talk about one of those down below. But even though it can be kind of hard to track down some of the new and unique and maybe non-health and fitness focused Apple Watch apps, and even though some big companies are pulling their apps off the platform, there are still some really great developers making some thoughtful and useful apps. But first, let me just mention six of my favorite Apple Watch apps that I've already covered on the channel. There's a lot more. I'm going to link you to the videos where I've covered all of them if you want to check them out down in the description because these are just essentials that you need to know about before we get into the new apps. Nano gives you a pretty incredible Reddit experience right on your wrist. I mean, seriously, it's kind of mind blowing. Drafts is basically known as the fastest way to record notes on any Apple device. And on the Apple Watch, that's really no different. It's one of the best Apple Watch apps of all time. Cheat Sheet is super unique. It lets you set a mini note as a complication on your watch so your important info is always at hand. Hindsight is a great way to track how long it's been since you did anything drank a cup of coffee or worked out, whatever. It's fast and it's amazing. Numerics is a business data platform that helps you track important numbers, and it's great to get those numbers on your wrist. I use it to track YouTube subscribers and other important YouTube metrics. Finally, Just Press Record is amazing for recording audio very quickly. It saved my butt many times. So let's get into the new apps, starting with Bear, which is a note-taking app you might have heard about before that recently added watch support. It's one of the most fully featured Apple Watch apps I've ever seen. It really makes great use of everything that Apple lets you do, which is actually kind of constrained. Now, even though I've been very dedicated to Apple's own Notes app for years, and you should check out my Apple Notes video if you haven't seen it yet, I recently made the switch to Bear because I love the interface and all the options and the look. And a big part of why I decided to try it out is because it works with the Apple Watch and Apple Notes doesn't. Bear on your Apple Watch is very straightforward. The first thing you see when you open it is a new note button, which will let you dictate a new note. If you deep press into that button, you'll also get an option to scribble a new note just in case you're in a place where you can't talk. Underneath that, you'll be able to scroll through your 10 latest notes, which stay synced at all times. So that's cool, because you'll be able to see whatever it is you've been working on most recently. 
If you've got any pinned notes, which pins a note up to the top of your note list, then those are gonna show up here too, but it does count towards your 10 note limit. So if you have 10 pinned notes, that's all you're gonna see. If you deep press on a note itself, then you'll see an option to delete it, and you can also swipe left on it to get an append button, which will let you add some text to the end of a note. Now, if that's all this app could do, that would be pretty awesome already. But you can also add and then check off to do items, which is brilliant. No need for a second to-do list app. To add a to-do to a note, just deep press, and then you'll get an append button. Bear also makes it as easy as possible to record a new note, and that's thanks to the one-tap complication. Just tap it and start recording. It's perfect for quickly getting those ideas out of your head. Any notes that you dictate on your watch get pinned to the top of your note list, so later you're not gonna miss them and they'll be easy to find. One final really cool thing is that Bear on your watch will match any of the awesome themes that they have on your iPhone. I told you, this app is dope. I mean, you could get some serious work done here with just your Apple Watch and Bear, like serious work. Shift is the next app that I wanna share with you guys, and it's a keyboard for your wrist, like a real keyboard, because there are times when you don't wanna scribble something out with your finger, maybe it takes too long, and there's times when you can't talk to dictate something. So Shift isn't a true third-party keyboard that you could use with any app. Instead, it only works with messages, but it makes sending messages from your watch a lot more full-featured. So here, you get a full keyboard, which lets you easily access things like numbers or symbols or emojis. And if you're super into emojis, you're gonna love this because you can send more than one at a time, which is something you can't do with Apple's default messaging options. There's even a complication which you can set up for one tap access, although it kind of just sits there taking up space if you're not using it. What makes this different than Flick Type, which is another Apple Watch keyboard, is that you can see what you're typing in real time, which is great. If you deep press, you're also gonna be able to bring up some options, like clearing your text or turning on auto clear. Typing on this goes a bit slower for me. I mean, I'm not sure it's actually any faster than swiping with my finger, but it does work well. I mean, I didn't have any problems with it. If you're paying attention, you might've noticed that the keys are in alphabetical order, which is kind of different than the QWERTY keyboards you're probably used to. I thought I read somewhere that you could change that, but I haven't seen it as an option. Still, it's very usable. If you wanna check this out, it's 99 cents in the App Store. I'll link it up down below along with everything else so it's easy to find. And shout out to Adam for developing this, even though he's not even 20 yet. If he's done this already, what's he got coming up? I'm excited to see. If you've built out your dream smart home, or even if you just have some random smart gadgets kind of scattered around, I think you're really gonna love this next app, which is called Home Run for HomeKit. And it lets you put all your scenes on your wrist with a really great interface. Home Run basically lets you design your own alternative to Apple's HomeKit Apple Watch app. And there's some key advantages. Surprisingly, Apple's own app can be kind of slow on older Apple Watches. It only lets you view two scenes on the screen at a time. And the worst thing of all is that the complication is only a launcher. If you press it, it takes you to the app instead of actually changing a scene. Home Run, on the other wrist, is definitely faster and it lets you view up to 12 of your HomeKit scenes on the screen at once on the latest and largest Apple Watch. So just in case you're feeling a little bit lost here, scenes are like a collection of your smart gadgets that you've set to do something at a specific time or maybe at the tap of a button like we're talking about here or using your voice like with Siri. So for example, you could have a scene that you've called Wake Up which will turn on the kitchen lights and start your smart coffee maker all at the same time, or maybe right at 7 a.m. or 6 a.m., whatever. But setting up a scene in this app is super easy. So you create a tile, name it, choose an icon, and then pick a color for easy identification. And I really like how you can customize the layout here and drag it and rearrange the tiles. Maybe the best part of this whole thing is the fact that you can set the complication to actually change a scene. It's really fast and it's really useful. Now, I know that Audible sponsors a lot of content here on YouTube. This is not a sponsored Audible mention, although it probably should be Audible but I'm mentioning it here because it's something that I actually use and it's something that recently got added. Now subscribers already know I've really been diving into audiobooks in a big way lately. It's just such an easy way to cram in some extra knowledge when I'm in the car or when I'm filming or whenever. I love it and I love listening at one and a half times speed or faster. Anyways, being able to ditch my iPhone and listen to the audiobooks anywhere with just my AirPods and an Apple Watch is a very awesome experience. Now you gotta be an Audible subscriber, obviously, but if you wanna listen from your watch, just find the book in your library and hit those three dots over to the right and then select the sync to Apple Watch option. Syncing takes a while, like minutes, many minutes actually, like 20 or 30 minutes. 
possibly, depending on the size of the book. So it may be something that you go off and do something else while your watch is charging or something you do overnight. The interface is nice, it's straightforward, and it does a lot. You can play and pause, of course. You can skip forward and back 30 seconds each way. You can access the album art, and that also shows you how far along in the book you are overall. And of course, you can change the volume and set the sleep timer. J is our next app, and it's a really, really awesome replacement for the now defunct official Twitter Apple Watch app. In fact, I think I like it even better than Twitter's version, so maybe it's a good thing that the official app disappeared. So all the obvious functionality that you'd want is here. You can tweet, you can retweet, you can like tweets, and you can follow users. That's the core experience, but it gets so much better than that thanks to all the extras, which are kind of unexpectedly awesome. Like, you can watch Twitter videos here on your wrist. Seriously, I'm amazed at this because what other Apple Watch app even lets you watch videos? Also, you can view GIFs or GIFs. Let's not get that whole war started. But that's awesome because it's such a huge part of Twitter culture. And even cooler than that, you can not only view images, but you can also zoom in using the digital crown, making them so much better on that little Apple Watch screen. Seriously, it's such a full featured experience and it's pretty quick on the latest Apple Watch too. I mean, aside from Nano, that Reddit app that I mentioned earlier, what other app gives you access to so much content? Like not even Apple News gives you access to more than five stories at a time. If you deep press on the interface, it'll give you the option to refresh so you can see the latest tweets. And this also brings up the option to actually send a tweet. And then from here, you can actually do a Twitter search or see what's trending across the whole platform. There's also a unique option, which lets you bookmark tweets that you wanna see on a bigger screen later. And then you can head over to your iPhone app and access those whenever you have a chance. Finally, there's also a complication. So if you're obsessed with Twitter, it won't take you long to jump into the Twitterverse. Okay, here's the one fitness related app that I allowed myself to put on this list because it's something that I would actually use. It's called RepUp and it counts your reps for you while you're at the gym or working out or whatever so that you don't have to. It's really simple. So you turn the digital crown to set the number of reps and then you start lifting. And once you hit that number, then you get a tap on your wrist to let you know that you've hit the limit. What's really great though is that it tracks and saves your workouts in Apple's official health app so it contributes to those activity rings. No more lost workout data just because you're not doing cardio. It's fairly smart too. So if you stop, it's gonna detect that and then auto reset that rep count automatically. If you're wondering what kind of exercises it works with, it's pretty much anything that has prominent hand movements like squats, deadlifts, rows, shoulder press, bench press, that kind of stuff. I think I saw somewhere that it can even work with like push-ups, which is pretty cool if true. I mean, I don't know how many you could do, but I can do like a thousand. Now, is this a totally necessary app? Maybe not. I mean, you can obviously count reps yourself, but if you do wanna be able to concentrate just a little bit better on the actual workout, then this is great. And I love that it counts toward closing my activity rings. Now, a couple of videos back, and I'll link this up if you missed it, but I talked about my favorite podcast apps. In fact, the best podcast apps for the iPhone because I've been getting really into podcasts. And I mentioned in that video that I was gonna be switching from Apple's podcast app over to Pocket Cast because one of the things I liked about it was that it was everywhere, like literally everywhere. Browser, it's there. Apple Watch, it's there. And CarPlay, you guessed it, it's everywhere. That matters to me because one of the places where I use it the most is on my Apple Watch. Pocket Cast on your wrist obviously does what you'd expect. You can control what you're listening to very easily on the now playing screen. You can skip forward, you can skip back, adjust the volume and all that stuff. But that's not why I really love it here. There's a lot of apps that can do exactly the same thing. What's really great to me is the main menu screen, which contains everything that makes Pocket Cast on the iPhone so great in the first place. You can check back in on your podcasts that are already in progress. You can see your starred podcasts and then all of your custom filters, which is great for me because I spent a ton of time getting Pocket Cast all set up just how I want it. So to have all that translate over into my wrist experience is the best. And just like with Audible, being able to go somewhere with just my AirPods, just my Apple Watch and listen to my podcast, it's priceless. Actually, it's not, it's like 630 bucks. Just like the right app can upgrade your Apple Watch experience, the right host can upgrade the experience of running a website. That's why I'm so excited to tell you about today's sponsor, Squarespace. I have personally been a Squarespace user for a long time now. Both dailytech.com and mysliceapple.com run on Squarespace. It's just the platform that I chose. So it was a no brainer when they approached and said, can we sponsor some content? One of the main things that I love about Squarespace are the designer templates. You need your website to look great, first and foremost. And with Squarespace, you know it will. I also like the low maintenance approach since it's an all-in-one platform. So there's no plugins to install or patches or upgrades to mess around with. 
everything is just handled for you. Squarespace has award-winning customer service, and I've used it before and found it very helpful. Like when I set up my sliced apple, Squarespace support spent a lot of time with me answering questions that got me started down the right path. You can easily register a new domain with Squarespace, and you can also easily transfer a domain registered somewhere else over to Squarespace, and I've done both. Also, if you wanna launch and run an online store, you can do that with Squarespace too. There are tools for easy management of products, for orders, and inventory. I really think you're gonna like Squarespace because I do. Head over to Squarespace for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, you can use the link down in the description of this video to save 10% off your first order. Okay, it's been a while since I responded to some of your questions, so let's do that right now. I can't answer all of them because I asked you on Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. There's a lot of questions, but at least I'll get to some of them. All right, Jason Spear says, are you allowed to bring a guest to the Apple events? And if so, can I come with you to the next one? I would consider it lucky if I got to go again. So probably not gonna be able to bring anybody else. In fact, one of my buddies told me it was eight years of covering Apple before they got their first invitation. They're like one of the most talented, influential people I know covering Apple. So you gotta put in like a crazy amount of work. Zhang asks a really good question. If Apple technologies fall behind and sales go down, would I still like Apple? I think the answer is yes. Apple is so culturally like ingrained into me that I think I would be following the company into the future no matter what. Now I don't mean that if Apple becomes subpar and somebody else can make products that replace Apple and do what Apple's doing for me right now a lot better, including privacy and all kinds of stuff, the ecosystem, that I would just stay with Apple no matter what. It's not that kind of a relationship, but like Apple's been a big part of my life, like since college. So I'll probably always be interested in what they're doing. Uh, Dino says, what features are you most interested in in iOS 13? I am really, 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 really super excited about being able to have the same app open side by side on all apps. I heard that's coming. I've been asking for that forever. That's what I really want on the iPad, obviously. Pew Pew, are you a Christian? Yeah, but I don't want people to think like, oh, he's some perfect dude. James Bear says, what was your first Apple product? I don't know exactly which model it was, but it was definitely an iPod, maybe the fifth generation. Panda Coco says, what got you into tech YouTube and how would you suggest to get into the tech YouTube game? I've told this before, so sorry if some people have heard this, but Daily Tech started off as a blog back in 2012 because I was super bored at my day job and it was kind of a hobby for several years. And then Google killed it with one of its search engine updates. We weren't really ranking anymore. So we decided to move into video, which was a lot more fun and creative and I've loved it. Now I'm not gonna lie, it helps have a lot of money to do tech YouTube. The people that come into it having a lot of money to just buy whatever is most popular that has a lot of attention at the moment, always rock it up to the top a lot faster than people who start from the bottom. That said, the best advice is just to start. And that goes for anything, not just tech YouTube. If you have a dream, you better start sooner than later. I regret not doing it sooner. Mr. Roy says, how am I doing today? And thank you, that is nice of you to ask. I'm doing well, especially because I had a nitro cold brew. All right, that's enough questions for today. I don't wanna make this too long. If I didn't answer your question, then make sure to keep asking the next time I ask. Maybe we'll try to get it in. I would love to know which Apple Watch apps are your favorite, either from this list or my previous videos or stuff that I haven't even talked about yet because I wanna discover some new ones too. So you guys can help me out a little bit. Leave me a comment down below or hit me up. I'm at Daily Tech, spelled Daily T-E-K-K -K, on Instagram and Twitter. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Later.